Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, my great honor to bring to you presidential candidate Cenk Uger. He's in the building. First ever naturalized U.S. citizen running for office. It's the Thanksgiving treat at this point. You know, you have turkey, you watch football, maybe you toss the pigskin around yourself. And I and my uncle get together and have a jank off. That's right. A real uncle nephew standoff. That's right. Not true. Ted Cruz ran in 2016. Doesn't matter. Those were all technically still considered natural born U.S. citizens. Apparently, I did not know this. He does. Actually, yeah, let's get started with that. I told you George Romney was born in Mexico and therefore he was not eligible in the same way that you weren't. But you said, no, that's actually not the case. George Romney has like another like legal way of getting in. And the only person was what? Barry Goldwater. Yeah. So everybody has an excuse. John McCain was born in Panama, but he was born on a military base. Ted Cruz claims that his mom was an American citizen. Actually, what do you mean claims? Is not the case? No, because she was voting Canadian elections at the time. So that's actually on the record. So Ted Cruz should have Ooh, never been allowed to. What the f Ted Cruz is not even a citizen. He never got naturalized. Bro, you're coming in hot right now, though. Yeah. So since he never got naturalized, he's actually not even a citizen. He shouldn't even be a senator, let alone That's crazy. running for president. He claimed that his mom was, an, was a citizen at the time he was born, which would give him the excuse. George Romney's the same way. Barry Goldwater was born in the Arizona Territory and was not a natural-born citizen. So I don't know what excuse they're using for him, but it's not mm -hmm. in the Constitution. Bottom line is, guys, 14th Amendment says all persons born or naturalized have due process and equal protection. Anyone out there who's like, oh, did you read the Constitution, man? Oh, you know what? I hadn't read it until a troll on Twitter told me. Oh, there it is. Oh, why? Wow, I should have checked, right? No, did you read the kind of part? Do you understand what it means to amend something, amend the Constitution? And it says very clearly, born or naturalized, okay. equal protection. It's okay, super but, clear. But have you considered the fact that I'm racist? Ah, another one I hadn't thought of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there is actually a movement online called... Don't don't care, still voting for Jank. That's right. I don't know if you were aware of this or I not. I actually am not. How do you get rid of Hamas? Let's take a look. If you don't do it the way Israel is currently doing it, albeit with... You do what America did with the Osama bin Laden. We didn't go drop a nuke on Pakistan. We didn't go destroy 6,000 residential buildings in the middle of Pakistan. We sent in special forces. Is it more dangerous to the special forces? Of course. That's the point of special forces. Try to find the hostages. Does it look like Israel's trying to find the hostages? If I have a family member that's a hostage, I'm disgusted what, by what Netanyahu's doing now. How do you know they're not in the buildings you're dropping bombs on? How do you know they're not in the tunnels you're dropping bombs on? How do you know they're not in the hospitals you're dropping bombs on? So this, if you want the hostages rescued, every rational human being can agree. This is not the way to do it. This is the way to do death and destruction for the sake of death and destruction. It's collective punishment. It's genocide against Palestinians. And the world has to speak out. So my way is not pleasant either. It involves a lot of folks dying on uh, on both sides. I understand that. Those are super hard choices. But go find Hamas. Go find the hostages. Go rescue them. Instead of wantingly, indiscriminately, killing after killing. And let's be honest, when you drop a bomb and, and, a, and a kid's head explodes and a grandmother is incinerated, that is terrorism. Don't care, still voting Yo. for Jank. That video that we just watched has 370,000 likes on TikTok. That segment got over 4 million views on YouTube. Yeah, you it's... you killed it. Obviously, you and I have, uh, I guess, some disagreements on that. I think, like, the best way to deal with the situation is to negotiate and do the exact opposite. That was my perspective after 9-11 as well. People have often asked me, you know, what should have America done? And I'm like, literally the opposite of what they did, which I think you would agree with as well. Do you think America should have invaded Afghanistan after 9-11? Well, that's a complicated one. Iraq, obviously not. So for Afghanistan, it depends on what version of the story you believe. Did they actually offer up bin Laden or didn't they? If they were offered up bin Laden, then it's a no-brainer. You take bin Laden, you don't invade Afghanistan for no reason. Well, they offered up bin Laden before, as a matter of fact, before 9-11, 9-10 specifically, was when, what's the guy that? Ahmed, <laughs> Ahmed Shah Massoud was the leader of the Northern Allegiance, right? And he famously, before his assassination, 
assassination as an Afghan politician and military commander, one of the Mujahideen that was obviously another rugged anti-Soviet fighter, but uh, obviously the Mujahideen were a collection of different forces that were not aligned with one another ideologically. There was like different sects, different opinions. Following the rise of the Taliban in 1996, Masood was a rejectioner of the Taliban's fundamentalist interpretation of Islam, and he was a leader of the Northern Alliance, and he told America that he wanted to give up Osama bin Laden, and then he was executed because yep. the CIA leaked his uh, location in uh, still disputed claims on whether or not it was deliberately done, who knows, but the CIA leaked his location, and then he was assassinated by Al-Qaeda that found his uh, information and portrayed themselves as journalists, actually, in a TV interview, and then they blew him up. Yeah, that was great. So, the other time that we had bin Laden, uh, where we could have at least withdrawn at that point, is that we had him cornered in Tora Bora shortly after we went in, and there's a New York Times article about how Rumsfeld said, no, do not pursue him. Yeah, isn't yeah. that where the, we don't negotiate with terrorists come from, as well? No, that, not from that one, because there was no negotiation. We had him cornered, and the American general asked permission to pursue, and Rumsfeld said, no, do not pursue. And so we just oh, let I was talking about this. Go. On October 14th, Sunday, October 14th, 2001, an article older than half of chat in The Guardian writes, Bush rejects Taliban offer to hand Bin Laden over. The reason why they said they were denying this offer was because the Taliban said, we will give you Osama Bin Laden as long as you take it to the International Criminal Court and as long as there's evidence as to his wrongdoing, which you could look at and interpret as like, oh, well, that's... I could look at that and say that's perfect. Uh, yeah. What did we do with the Nazis? We brought them to Nuremberg. We didn't just summarily execute them. We did rule of law. And did we have evidence on bin Laden? Yeah, of course we had evidence on bin Laden. So that's three times we rejected an offer to get bin Laden because we wanted more war. And so I don't agree with that. If there was no real offer, then we would have had to go and get bin Laden. But again, the good news is right after we went in, we had him. And Rumsfeld and Cheney turned it down. Yeah. By the way, the website's jankforamerica.com. And the thing is, for that, the movement that's saying, I don't care. I'm still voting for Jenk. First of all, I love you. Thank you. Appreciate you. But second of all, you don't have to worry about it. We're going to go to court and the court's either going to say yes or no. So it shouldn't affect whether you're going to vote for me. The judge is going to be like, don't care voting for Jenk. That's what the judge is going to say. That's entirely possible. Or they could say, yeah, I care. And you're right. <laughs> the 14th Amendment clearly amended it. So anyway, this is the this is the Bin Laden stuff that we were talking about. But like uh, the parallel here is, of course, in my opinion, with October 7, I think that and then what you said on Piers is, is, I mean, it's decent. It's definitely far are better than like 99% of Democratic politicians at that moment, almost 99% of Democratic politicians. You and I are in agreement on this issue. So I don't I don't think we're going to fight a lot on this. We're not going to have a jank off on Israel-Palestine, it seems. No, I mean, look, I think Hamas is counterproductive. I think they're Muslim fundamentalists. I got no interest in them. I don't know if you uh, disagree with that. But obviously, the Palestinians should be free. Obviously, the occupation is an unbearable injustice. And obviously, we shouldn't send a, a dime to Israel until they not only end this bombing campaign but end the occupation so i don't know why in the world we would support someone who's oppressing people for 56 straight years yeah no i i, I agree i think that's a fairly reasonable take i the only difference i guess is that like no i mean i agree with all of that yeah it's not like uh i've talked about this before it's not like hamas it, in and of itself is like a like a popular movement it's more so anyone who will retaliate against israel's unjustifiable criminal occupation it's belligerent occupation i think that is what the broad majority opinion of the palestinians is that like the understanding is the occupation has to be costly because if it's not then Israel thinks they can just continue getting away with what they're doing you so, know I'll just say two things about that one when the Palestinians went to the UN to try to get a state declared just like Israel did when Israel said that that was unacceptable and America backed that play that's what led to this because yeah. if you say diplomacy is terrorism and terrorism is terrorism well then you're going to get actual terrorism because you're not giving any political diplomatic peaceful solution a chance it was absurd and it was unconscionable for America yeah. to not support the Palestinians' resolution to get a state through the United Nations. Well, there was also a 27 Hamas heel turn, basically, where they did the same thing. They tried to do a PLO situation where they updated their charter and then they said, like, they wanted to gain international recognition. But of course, that was antithetical to what the Israeli governments were designing Hamas to be, a fundamentalist terror cell. They're bad. They're terrorists. Everyone in Palestine are terrorists. They voted for Hamas. 
loss. I mean, this is something that... So I, can I just, t- just right. say two things about that? First of all, I've now seen a bunch of Israeli officials, including Isaac Herzog, the president, say that. And what they're doing is they're agreeing with Hamas and they're agreeing with Osama bin Laden. In bin Laden's letter to the U.S., he said the American civilians had it coming because they voted for the American administrations that they have, like the Bush one. And Hamas says the Israeli c- uh, citizens had it coming because they voted for Netanyahu, etc. So when uh, Isaac Herzog says, well, the Palestinians once voted for Hamas, you know, 20 years ago, so their civilians had it coming. That is li- a very literal terrorist talking point. So yeah, but you he's don't, advocating for okay, terrorism. Okay, you don't understand. Have you considered that terrorism can only be done by what we perceive our enemy combatants? I wouldn't say brown guys in this situation because Israel is very brown in the exact same way that like Palestine is, you know what I mean? But like yeah. in the eyes of the Western world, we mostly only see Ashkenazi Jews. So we think like, oh, those are the white guys on the field. Yeah, no, it's those. that's why all these labels are so stupid. Like the Israel and the Palestinians are nearly indistinguishable. They're, of course, we're the same people. We're all indistinguishable. Our DNA is like 99.9% the same. It's just labels that we put on people, Israeli, Palestinian, Jewish, Muslim. It's silly. It's totally, it, to kill each other over that is insanity. It's not a religious conflict necessarily. I think it's more so that that is the justification used to it's, further polarize and harden the battle lines, basically. Like to be able to draw the battle lines accurately or to justify it, to sell the war. Yeah, well, there's, there's a bunch of factors. So the religious fundamentalism of the Israeli settlers is definitely relevant, of Hamas is definitely relevant, and it helps to separate out them in a way that is unresolvable. In other words, it's disastrous because it separates them out in a way that's unresolvable. But ultimately, it's a power dynamic at play. And by the way, they say, oh, well, if Hamas had the power that Israel has, they'd kill every Jew. No, that's actually not at all true. It would play out almost exactly as it's playing out now, where the Palestinians would oppress the Israelis and occupy them. But you don't even know that. We have no way of knowing that because Hamas and any kind of political mobilization that it's been able to create for itself, any kind of like popularity that it's been able to cultivate for itself, and it's been deeply unpopular throughout its inception and well into the 2000s, and even now is not a very popular entity due to the occupation, is due to the fact that time and time again, these negotiations that were being done with Yasser Arafat led to more settlements, more expansion in the West Bank, more oppression, the the permit tyranny that uh, Palestinians were subjected to. I don't even think that Hamas, in the way that we understand it, or the way that it exists, they had that same level of power. No, no, 100%. Except yeah. for the fact that the whichever government has unlimited power will almost always abuse it, right? And that's what's happening in Israel. But overall, of course Hamas wouldn't exist if there was no occupation. Yeah, and they would vanish. It would, yeah. yeah. So look, one other defense that uh, Israeli supporters use is, well, all these guys are anti-Semitic, so they, they no matter what we do, they try to kill us. That's nonsense. Total, utter nonsense. Yeah. So first of all, there's global anti-Semitism. That is definitely true, right? But is that related to why the Palestinians in particular are aggrieved with Israel? <laughs> yeah. No. It's because you're occupying them. That's not complicated. <laughs> Pretending it's because they're hateful? Okay, when were they supposed to love you? At what point in the occupation where the Palestinians go, hey, you know what? Even though these guys have been occupied us and taking away all of our dignity, our economic opportunity, dropping bombs on us, cutting off the water and power anytime they want, and bringing settlers to steal our land and having them execute us every once in a while summarily. Oh, right, but we love them. I would go so far as to say that I think Palestinians do show tremendous amount of resilience and also are infinitely less hateful towards uh, Jewish people or even even Israelis in general, but like Jewish people in, uh, across the board than one would expect under any other normal circumstance something that norm finkelstein talks about a lot is like the hatred that his parents his mom and dad both holocaust survivors both concentration camp survivors over in the warsaw ghetto the hatred that they feel towards germans carried on to like their experiences living in america and he always talks about like how understandable of a hatred that was considering like what the germans had done what the nazis had done and that distinction is almost impossible to make even after years and years of of like surviving that oppression as far as i've seen the palestinians are even infinitely less hateful maybe it's because they understand their position is like born into oppression and they they are very cognizant or maybe it's because they are uh, hyper educated uh, in spite of all of the circumstances that they've been uh, that they've had to deal with but most palestinians that i hear from are way less hateful than anyone else would in under normal circumstances yeah last thing i'll say on that is look they, they set up this oppression loop that is unbreakable so they say since they hate us we have to occupy and oppress them. and the more they occupy and oppress them 
them, the more they, they are hated, of course, as would happen in any situation. So then they say, well, now you hate us more. Now we have to occupy you more. Oh, yeah. well, now you hate us more. Now we have to occupy you more. So it's an infinite loop. They cannot be broken. And the reason for that is that it's not that Netanyahu and the Israeli right-wing government couldn't figure that out logically. It's that they want to occupy Yeah, them. exactly. I mean, this is, I think this is one of the most prescient Netanyahu takes of all time. This is like, it was on TRT, Terete, the Turkish uh, broadcaster, a leaked uh, video from 2001. It's not even a leaked video, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. This so, this, so yeah. perfectly summarizes, like, exactly what his position is and exactly how he deals with, like, American leaders in general. A leaked video of 2001 shows Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu talking about how Israel intentionally strikes Palestinians painfully, how he deceived the U.S. to break the Oslo Accords, and how Americans will always support Israel if it faces backlash. <laughs> The world will uh, say that we're the aggressors. Hold on. Because they can say whatever they want. Aren't you afraid of what they'll say, Bibi? Especially today with the U.S.? I know how they are. America is something that you can easily maneuver and move in the right direction. And even if they say something, so then they say something. So what? 80% of Americans support us. By the way, this is the same Benjamin Netanyahu who sidestepped Barack Obama, regularly undermined him, went to the Republican Congress and delivered a speech while Obama was president. And he's right. You know what Obama did on his way out by the way obama least popular politician in israel widely condemned by uh, zionists as like a like a jew hater directly that's like what ultra zionists have said about barack obama what did obama do on his way out after being undermined and all over by benjamin netanyahu oh he gave him 38 billion dollars over the course of the next 10 years so you know he's right netanyahu is right <laughs> What happened with the Oslo Accords? The Accords which were ratified by Parliament. I was asked before the 1996 elections, will you fulfill them? Yeah. I said yes, subject to reciprocity and minimizing pullouts. I gave my own interpretation of the agreements in such a way that will allow me to stop the race back towards the 1967 borders. How do we manage to do this? Nobody defined what military facilities are, so they kept on taking more land under the auspices of military uh, use. So I defined them as being security zones. He's saying that. The entire Jordan Valley for me is a military facility. Nobody has, yes, like the Beit Shan Valley, you see, go figure. It's so funny that this is like presented as like leaked video, but the hilarity of it is that there is nothing leaked about this. This is all well documented. Half of that he's saying here is half of the he ran on time and time again. And also the other half is like very well documented by Israeli human rights organizations like B'Tselem. So none of this is like a big secret. Yeah. Look, it doesn't matter. At this point, all that there is on the Israeli side is the Israeli right wing. The Israeli left wing doesn't even support them. And uh, well, the and, Israeli left wing is... Yeah, well, it's okay. And then the, <laughs> and the U.S. government, right? Both 95% uh, of Republicans and Democrats. But not the U.S. people anymore. They've lost us. Uh, so now, you know, he's saying it's so easy to maneuver the Americans. By the way, American citizens, why don't you do an uprising against your own government, right? Look at him. He says, these are all my bitches. I can move them around any way I like. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. They kneel at my feet. That's a foreign government's leader saying that. Are you going to sit there and take it? Are you going to keep electing people like Biden and, and yes, Trump, who are their bitches and who do everything that Netanyahu tells them to do? Like a dog, Trump heals to this guy. Biden, of course, heals to this guy. He's been healing to him for 50 straight years. President Jenk. Yeah, JenkForAmerica.com. I'm actually for America. Not like these guys who sell us out to foreign countries nonstop. Has Trump stopped taking Saudi money yet? Is Biden off his knees yet for Saudi Arabia? Again, Saudi Arabia bitch slaps Biden and raises gas prices right before the midterms in insults him to his face, and what does Biden do? Nothing. He just kneels again. So I'm tired of the, these so-called Democratic leaders who kneel to everybody, kneel to all their corporate donors, kneel to our foreign governments, doesn't matter if it's Israel, Saudi Arabia, they 
never do what we want. 68% of Americans want a ceasefire, oh, but only like 10% of Congress does because yeah. they don't represent us. They just represent their donors. Anyone telling you otherwise I know what you're talking a about. goddamn liar, and R everybody knows it except the corrupt in Washington. The, Richie Torres is my congressman, my Richie favorite. Richie Torres, what a sellout. I mean, what a pathetic, groveling sellout. He's, I don't, Dude, I don't know what you're get about. it. You get money from that lobby. We get it. Okay. We all know it. You've groveled enough. Pick yourself up off the ground. It's humiliating. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Richie Torres, Jesus Christ, man. Have some dignity. Their boots are clean already, Richie. Get up off the ground. And when you talk about lobbies, I talk about defense contractors, oil companies. They also benefit from conflicts in the Middle East. But if you don't think that APAC's Dude. a lobby that affects the Democratic and Republican parties, Dude, you're I, on crack. Dad. I have never seen someone so openly and flagrantly defend a group that they're so directly getting financial support from. Like, this would be akin to a politician literally being like, if you consider Raytheon to be, like, an evil company, then I will, I think you should be arrested. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're a terrorist if you don't yeah, support Raytheon. Yeah, you're a terrorist Raytheon if you don't support Raytheon. Wasting more of our money. Like, right? most, most senators and most congressmen at least, like, have the dignity of, like, shutting the up when they know they should. Richie Torres is like so horny that he literally shat on the president of J Street. Did you see this? But J Street is also a Zionist institution. It's just supposed to be a liberal Zionist institution that's like anti-settlements and things of that nature. And like, there's supposed to be a counterbalance to APAC. I like J Street. Look, here's the thing Communicate. about J Street. Anyway, they're, the bottom line is they're certainly not anybody's radical, right? They're no, just they're not. A, like in, they're comparison, in comparison to APAC, is, of course they're not. So yeah. yeah, they're liberal Zionists in general. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Richie Torres has yelled at the president of J Street after Jamal Bowman talked about a J Street back West Bank trip that American congressmen and women took, okay, where he said he was not allowed into certain parts of the West Bank because he wasn't Jewish. And Richie Torres was like, that's a lie. And then he conflated that with an actual anti-Semitic conspiracy, the Jewish space lasers conspiracy, and said West Bank checkpoints are a lie akin to the Jewish space lasers, like Jewish checkpoints in the West Bank, yeah. which is psychotic it's like the most insane thing you can say you're undermining the severity of anti-semitism by conflating it with things that are demonstrably correct that people have seen and documented israeli human rights groups have documented this for years and years it's so f stupid Haas, i actually saw that in your t in one of your tweets yeah and i couldn't believe he said that so there's real anti-semitism in the world and in the country right now i mean two synagogues got shot up yeah. right wingers are you know now you know they're supporting nick fuentes donald trump had dinner with fuentes kanye west they're openly talking about elon musk is talking about Jewish uh, great replacement conspiracy. Yeah, that's totally nuts, right? Like, in the moment of this, like, heightened anti-Semitism, for them to use it for political reasons is disgusting. It's it's the boy who cried wolf at the worst possible time. To say that Jewish space lasers, which is an obviously anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, is yeah. the equivalent of saying that there's checkpoints in the West Bank. What are you talking about? Of course there's checkpoints in the West Bank. Netanyahu would agree that there's checkpoints in the West Bank. Yeah. That's a mental thing to say. That's saying, hey, listen, I will do any lie i will do any piece of propaganda please send checks to richiedoras.com or wherever the hell you, your website is dude we see you brother we see you the whole world sees how pathetic you are richie torres yeah you're I, like a groveling groveling pathetic miserable person it, it's, just go into some other job become a plumber become a dentist do something useful with your life instead of being a floor mat a, 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 the dirty mop that you use like the dirtiest mop you have for any lobbyist that comes by well, he deleted have it. to be APAC. To be fair, he deleted it. Except he blocked me and he's been like going off on a tangent still. He's a ridiculous person debasing himself in this way. Also, once again, another person is John Fetterman as well, which is so, so, so disappointing. You so want me to tell you the backstory of that? Because I was... All right, give us, the, give us the deets. Yeah, so when Fetterman was running, he's running as a populist progressive. We're all super excited. This is pre-stroke. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm just keeping it real, right? And at that point, he's like the next coming. Like, I think he's going to run for president. He's got yeah. the best chance of winning. He could knock Biden out. I'm super jazzed about Fetterman, right? And he gets it that... 
you shouldn't do the robotic plastic crap that other politicians do. Yeah. Then he's never he's a lieutenant governor, so he's never spoken out about Israel. So everybody's curious how is he going to handle it? Because right at that point, Democratic majority for Israel, APAC, etc., are dumping millions of dollars into races. Yeah. They've already spent four million dollars against Nina Turner. So everybody knows that. So they're we're all the progressive community is waiting to see what he's going to say. Is he going to a stand up to them, b punt, or c kiss their ass? And he comes out with an aggressively ass kissing message. And so at that point, I, I no hate. Okay, I got it. You're trying to win the election. You don't want four million spent against you. But once you win the election, then you're an incumbent. You have a ton of money. You have a ton of money. Do you see what I'm showing you though? Power and leverage. Okay. Do you see what I'm showing you? Democratic majority for Israel PAC endorses Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman for Senate. Of course. You kiss their ass, they endorse you. That's how it works. But then he gets into Senate and it turns out he's like Richie Torres Jr. And he's, you know, that's a heavy insult. I, I'll take it back, right? But it's no, like, no, no, I think that's close, valid. Brother. No, 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 it's valid. He has more to offer than Richie Torres for sure. But I think that it's an incredibly valid comparison to make because he quite literally, I don't know why, seemingly dropped everything else and like either talks about being depressed, wearing his dumb outfits, or Israel and defending Israel unconditionally. He had a really flag that he was waving at the Palestinian protesters outside of a demonstration. Yeah. He went to the psychotic let's kill more babies march that they did where john hagee famous anti-semitic psychopathic far-right evangelical televangelist was speaking about how you know israel has a right to judea and samaria because it's like you know armageddon is gonna happen if you say by the way that israel has a right to judea and samaria it's the same thing as saying river to the sea it's it's no it's way it's way past river to the sea yeah. because river to the sea in its inception and consistently has been an emancipatory slogan that does not mean killing jews i don't know if you're a, a anti river to the sea guy i'm I, not i don't want it like I, it's it's not a useful thing if so I, i've defended it unconditionally I, I, I and continue you. to and defend it i understand it. that it could be interpreted in, in different ways and i've said that having said that it's not a helpful or productive thing to say but if you say that israel should have judea or samaria one you're a religious fundamentalist nut job you're a lunatic who should be locked up in an asylum number two you're basically saying you're pro-genocide and you have no respect for the palestinian people you're against all also, I, I don't law think you're for war crimes. Here's why I don't think it's an equivalence either, by the way, because it is in the part of the Likud cha uh, charter as well. The equivalence does not exist there because like from the root of the sea, Palestinians are under occupation and the occupying force saying that is of course going to be a little bit different. It's the same dynamic between black power, which is an emancipatory slogan, an emancipatory group versus white power, which came after black power in an effort to do white identitarian politics, which was inherently genocidal and, and fascist. There's no need for it. We're a hundred percent right on this issue. Yeah. I, the reason why I defend it unconditionally is because, well, one, I care about the etymology, I care about the history of the statement, but also because people get fired over it. And I think that's ridiculous. Susan Sarandon just got dropped by UTA very cowardly. The head of CAA's like motion pictures division yeah. is, as far as I understand, like one of the only like Libyan women of color in a position of power and Hollywood and she was slated to be dropped entirely from CAA and then Tom Cruise stepped up and was like no you can't do that this is my agent I want her to stay and a bunch of like the powerful clients of CAA had to stand for her so that she didn't lose her job entirely it is so f scummy so nasty so f that this is what's happening you have Melissa Barrera who was dropped from Scream 7 it's like comical for putting forth on her social media profile on her Instagram story a Jewish Currents magazine article Holocaust and genocide historian scholar Ross Segal's article on Jewish Currents magazine on how Israel is a textbook case for genocide this man is a genocide scholar he's Israeli he's Jewish he's writing for Jewish Currents magazine and posting that article in the eyes of Spyglass Studios or whatever the f it was a bridge too far. Yeah. So number one, it's let's be called what it is, cancel culture. So now it's McCarthyism. Yeah. It's the only real type of cancel culture that like has been so systematized in the United States of America. Historically speaking, there has never been like a anti Nazi cancel culture in America. Nazis have been historically defended under the auspices of free speech. The only time where we have historically allowed Congress and allowed politicians and allowed organizations to undermine political action that is supposed 
supposed to be protected under the First Amendment is McCarthyism, Red Scare. Barry Weiss started can- cancel culture by oh, going yeah. around targeting Palestinian professors. Oh, yeah. Saying, how dare you treat Palestinians as human beings? You should be fired, right? Yeah. And then they she pretended to be aggrieved by cancel culture. No, bitch, you started it. Let's be honest about it. Let's call it what it is, okay? And so this is like the height of cancel culture. How dare you disagree with Israel? You're fired. And none of them, by the way, said from river to the sea at all. They said war crimes and genocide. Those are the trigger words, apparently. But those are just facts. Srebrenica, 6,000 Muslims killed. That was called a genocide because they targeted them for being Muslim, right? And so it's not Holocaust. It's not the same thing. You're just targeting based on ethnicity and killing a certain number of people and mass relocation. There's no question. It's definitional. There's one hero in that CIA agent story, but it's such a Tom bad... Cruise? Well, along with Tom Cruise, because you already said Tom. But it's such a bad precedent to set and such a bad look. Like, if you're Steven Spielberg, who apparently, if you believe the reporting, I don't know that it's, you know, I'm, I didn't, I wasn't there, or any of these other guys who pressured CAA to fire her, that's such a bad look, guys. Wait, Steven Spielberg At a Spielberg time of anti-Semitism, did? you don't go around going, she dared to speak out against Israel. Fire her! No, Spielberg right? says anti- that I, I read it in one of the articles. I'm not putting it on Spielberg. Like, there was a whole bunch of people internally at CAA and externally, their clients, and, and he was mentioned in one of the articles. He's not the p- pivotal guy. It's not his name's not important. The point is, a whole bunch of people said, let's fire her because she's there to say a political statement we don't agree with. Yeah. Even though it's technically and factually true, right? The other hero, other than Tom Cruise, was J.J. Abrams. So he st- apparently stepped up behind the scenes and was like, what are you guys doing? No, no, don't fire her. But you know who actually has been like incredibly critical of the Benjamin Netanyahu administration? It's someone you would not expect. It's someone whose brother you've called yeah, yeah, yeah. a donkey yeah, and yeah. is the reason why you were, <laughs> maybe you may or may not have left WME as a matter matter of fact but yeah oh, Ari yeah, Emanuel yeah because I looked into it to see like I wonder what his perspective is because like obviously Rom is like reactionary piece right well so I thought two different things though so and Rom served in the IDF too so Ari Emanuel supports Israel 200 percent, and I'm sure there's a million things we disagree on but that's the great thing about Jewish culture is that it not only like allows for dissent but it advocates dissent it, it wants you it wants to have these you're supposed to challenge the rabbi etc so there's tons and tons of both Israelis and Jewish Americans who can't stand Netanyahu and who want to get rid of Netanyahu yeah so and Ari Emanuel's in that camp and bless his heart for that and he's like how much more do we have to deal with this Right? He's totally incompetent, totally self obsessed, totally corrupt. Let's get rid of this son of a. Yeah. It's not a secret. I've been saying this since October 7th. You have to be very careful when you criticize Israel. It's just the truth. You have to be for two reasons. One, because you do not want to say anything that can be misconstrued as anti Semitic because anti Semitism is, is bigoted. It's unacceptable. The other reason is because there are certainly going to be people that want to misconstrue your message to say, oh, yeah, look at it. He's being anti Semitic. When that happens, when your words are cynically misconstrued, if you are especially approaching a criticism of Israel from a callous perspective because you know that let's say morality is on your side and you say something as callous as like maybe not even as callous but like marginally 10 percent as callous as like amy schumer for example who's been like baying and cackling like a hyena about how all palestinians are rapists and deserve death and destruction or sarah silverman who literally said justified that we must cut the electricity and food and water to the gaza strip only to be rewarded with a daily show a broadcasting opportunity or brett gelman all of these guys who were just like saying disgusting freakish things about palestinians and and how they have to be ethnically cleansed they will never get punished you on the other hand if you say something that can even be remotely misconstrued will absolutely get punished so for jonathan greenblatt look he did great work uh, during the Trump Muslim ban and all that stuff. And so, you know, he's a mixed bag. He's done... Who? Good, Greenblatt? Yeah, in, in sticking out for Muslims, uh, uh, Americans, and other people. But whenever it comes to Israel, he thinks that it's his job to defend Israel, and it isn't. You're misconstruing your job, brother. That's APAC and Democratic Majority for Israel, etc. You're supposed to be standing up for Jewish Americans. And so the way that, that you he throws around the word anti-Semitism in regards to defending any Israeli policy is deeply counter no, they fully they fully went back to like 1990, early 90s ADL, collaborating yeah. with apartheid South African agents and and spying on the Jewish left. It's basically back to that level of ADL this time around. Yeah, and you're ruining the credibility of the organization. No, no, it's gone. It's just lit on fire. And and I think Jonathan Greenblatt openly recognized it. Even the former president of ADL literally tweeted out, Jonathan Greenblatt is a piece of 
basically. Like, I mean, he didn't and say those words. because, uh, like, of what he's doing to defend Elon Musk. Yes. Too. And so that's, like, you know what? I mean, I don't even want to bring him up, but it's a perfect analogy. Rabbi Shmuley, right? So oh, he, he goes and attacks me in, like, the, in an insane lunatic way on Piers Morgan, calls me every name of the book, but then it turns out he was the guy defending Bobby Kennedy for saying that coronavirus is genetically designed to avoid Ashkenazi Jews, and he defended Michael Jackson when he wrote Beat Me, Jew Me in a song. So he's like a little paid bitch there's to defend more, anti-Semites. All right, hold on. Well, not anti-Semites in this case, but he's also defended defender of Israel slash defender of the constitutional reasons as to why we should look into lowering the age of consent laws, the Dersh. Did you know that? Uh-huh. He defended right. Alan Dershowitz when Virginia Jeffrey came out and said, Alan Dershowitz, uh, you know, sexually assaulted me. Friend to Jeffrey Epstein, Alan Dershowitz. He... Of course he did. Right, because he doesn't have... What, does he have a congregation somewhere? Rabbi, right? He's like a... He has this non-profit where most of the money goes to him and his wife and their house, I think. So you could look it up. You can see the exact details, right? You don't take my word for it. You, my opinion is that Rabbi Shmuley is a corrupt defender of anti-Semites and does it for money and is one of the worst pieces of there is in media, but you could look it up. That's just my opinion. Anyway, so this decision from the CIA was made after Duck Hill uh, reposted an Instagram story on Wednesday, which read in part, you're currently learning who supports genocide. She added her own message over the repost stating that the line for me, what's more heartbreaking than witnessing genocide, witnessing the denial of the genocide is happening. That's why the f CAA guys were like, that's a bridge too far, actually, madam. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to make sick ass movies 10 years down the line about how, you know, there were brave defenders of, of the Palestinians or whatever the f like, think about it this way. What are like some of the top movies right now? Martin Scorsese's historical rendition of Killers of the Flower Moon. Like, what the f are we doing here? Y you guys don't realize you can't draw a parallel to what's happening? I guess they just like want those in Hollywood just like don't really give about ethnic cleansing happening because it turns out it makes really good movies. Oppenheimer is another one. Exactly. Look, let's be honest, okay? They're doing the same exact thing that Turks do, okay? Oh, with the Armenian genocide. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, oh, well, no, it's not, a, it's not a genocide. I mean, I mean, yeah, we marched them and yeah, we moved a million people and we did ethnic cleansing and we and we did the war crimes and, and we dropped bombs onto buildings where we know Hamas is in the tunnels and the tunnels are completely unaffected and we killed 11,000, 12,000 civilians, over 5,000 children. But no, you can't call it a genocide. No, it's like, literally the definition of a genocide yeah and same thing that happened with the ottoman empire right yeah mass relocations massacres targeting a specific group yeah people it's clearly that is the definition of a yeah. genocide people think incorrectly there's like a number that you have to hit for it to be a genocide that's not how it works yeah there would be no reason to study genocides and to have any kind of designation for what is a genocide if the only designation is appropriate after the fact that doesn't mean anything then why the are we learning about anything at all? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why would you ever learn about how this stuff works if it was only allowed to be spoken on after the fact? Like the top of the hour ad break that I'm going to run right now that I forgot to run. Okay, uh, and I'm going to go pee. You can talk to the chat. Whenever he does this, I plug my stuff. So, jankforamerica.com, <laughs> running for president. By the way, I bought bidenisgoingtolose.com. I bought selfishjoebiden.com. Because my name's hard to spell, right? So, I bought all those other things so that you could be clear. And Biden is going to lose. Hopefully, we'll talk about that next. Look, I appreciate all you guys out there. You know, speaking of Thanksgiving, I've got over 6,600 donors, man. The faith they've shown in me is unbelievable. If you guys want to, at a minimum, as a protest against Biden being foisted upon us when he's 81 years old, obviously going to lose, massively down on the polls, total egomaniac, doesn't even want to run, can't finish the sentence. Even if it's like a dollar in a protest, go to jankforamerica.com or bidensgonnalose.com and chip in, man. By the way, for the fight against discrimination against naturalized citizens, it's absurd. What is the Habsburg dynasty? Is he going to take us over? No, it's a 14th Amendment already said naturalized citizens have equal protection. They didn't say, oh, but you should read our mind. We didn't really mean equal. So we're going to test that in the courts. And for 25 million naturalized citizens, we're sick of it. We're sick of, ah, oh, you're not really one of us. You're not really a 100% citizen. You're a second class citizen. And look, when right wing does it, when the trolls do it, I have no problem, man. That just slides right off my back. I've been through it 2,000 times, right? But left-wingers should never do that. They shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, uh, we all like the original discriminatory constitution, man. Don't, can't you read? It says three-fifths of a person. Yeah, that got amended out too, brother, okay? And equal protection and due process means we protect every American as they are 100% Americans. So if you're in favor of that, jankforamerica.com, help out on that too. God damn, dude. Yes. You have not stopped promoting, holy
That's how I do. You I give was, me the I mic, was sneaking. I was sneaking in a little bit of macaroni and cheese. I don't blame you. The most important election of our lifetimes. We need a new candidate. Yeah, that's so funny. Damn uh, man, we put that website together in a minute. We're gonna get a new website. That's obviously super cheesy. Okay. Policy, policy, policy. Time off for parents. Paid family leave. Higher wages. Fifteen dollar minimum wage. Sixty five percent of America's support. Affordable health insurance. Public options. Sixty eight percent of America's support. Fight corruption and gerrymandering. Ninety percent of American support. Allow men. Medicare to negotiate drug prices, 83% of Americans support. Where's Joe Biden? Too busy trying to stay alive uh, so he can cross the finish line. So look, the reason I put the percentages in there is because it's so obvious that all of our policies are super popular and yet they never get done. And because of the of the politicians you know what's ironic about what you just wrote here pretty sure biden ran on all of these yeah so and by, by the way that's another reason why i put it he did nothing to end gerrymandering he didn't even in, introduce the public option he purposely threw the 15 dollars minimum wage under the bus himself paid family leaves at 84 percent. never proposed it after it got taken out of the build back better why don't you just do it as a standalone bill and he, to be fair to him though he did negotiate drug price he did it on one drug left like insulin Ten thousand other drugs totally unregulated uh, so my point is Joe Biden's a liar. He never intended to do any of these things. They're incredibly popular. He could do them at any time that he wants to. Propose paid family leave in the Senate. Embarrass the Republicans in, into, go ahead, vote against them. Vote against American moms. I dare you. I dare you. Why don't you do it? And then we'll pick up some more Senate seats. Why doesn't Joe Biden do the goddamn bare minimum? Because he's a liar. He doesn't want to do any of these things. These are all things that the donors are blocking. Not Republicans, not the filibuster, why not the parliament. Why public option and not Medicare for all? Medicare for all also is super popular, but I put public option in because it's one indisputably popular including with republicans and number two joe biden promised it and didn't even propose it it's like the bare minimum and he didn't even propose it Bullshit. like if that wasn't a lie what was it get like, his it, like the mainstream media catches feelings when you call politicians liars when they're obvious liars right i'm the labor secretary when he wins i'm just telling you what's reality what americans know he didn't try he is joe manchin he calls him joe joe he gave him the pen for the inflation reduction act joe manchin comes along every once in a while and pulls a Wyatt Earp on him and he and Joe Biden plays the role of Billy Bob Thornton in Tombstone and Manchin looks at him and goes what are you going to sit there and bleed all day after bitch slapping him three times and what does Biden do oh okay yes sir why because he is Joe Manchin he never wanted to pass any of those things it wouldn't it be amazing guys if there was actually someone who wanted to pass the goddamn bills can I just say something I can't believe I'm going to defend Joe Biden here a little bit but like if Joe Biden was a more telegenic or more kinetic leader that wasn't 857 years old i think right now in this time and age and he didn't do the israel stuff obviously and maybe found more like a better work around and use the bully pulpit more effectively for student loans and other, other things words, that he was a different person but go ahead. well my point is <laughs> no you know what actually even if he didn't do the other stuff but he was just like younger and more energetic like if this was joe biden from like 2012 right i think he would be unimaginably popular because here's what i think i think that the economy was awful and obviously there's negative real wage growth for a very long time that people are not going to forget about right but it's not simply just inflation there's a lot that happened under the biden administration that i would factor as decent uh, to, to good even the nlrb decisions like allowing the agencies to operate then there was a lot of bad immigration policies were not great uh, really bad actually the way he's dealt with immigration is not great at all but ultimately what i'll say is i do believe that we'll look at the economy in a very different way unless something horrifying happens or unless something like you know there's more like foreign interference from opec plus or whatever and then biden demonstrates his inability to rein in like the american oil and gas industry but outside of that i think that controlling inflation and like real wage growth uh the experiencing will uh wage growth uh, paired up with a lot of like decent momentum from the NLRB if he was a younger person would could have been sold with a much better message like he does in a weird way try to present himself as like the guy who's like ending neoliberalism yeah which is so weird it's like in in it's gonna have a negative polarizing effect against that sort of thing which is what I'm frustrated by because it's like he's the worst guy to try to champion this message so look did he do things some things that were right yeah for example he's not getting nearly enough credit for creating over 14 million jobs so he more than doubled trump but that's the problem with joe biden in polling he's polling 19 points lower than trump on jobs when he more than doubled him on jobs. look if you can't make the case for yourself you shouldn't run like he's like hey i want to prevent everybody else from running but i'm not going to make my own case and i'm not going to make it against against trump every time he does a speech you know this he's like oh i want the republican party to be stronger uh my republican friends i love doing deals yeah with i them. hate that i hate that.
Just so yeah. much. And yeah. well, okay, then go be a Republican. You were supposed to be the leader of the Democratic. Look, he was true from Afghanistan. That's good. Yeah, people overhype how messy it was. It was always going to be messy to withdraw from any country. So it's not like Joe Biden hasn't done anything good. Some of the parts about climate change in, in those bills, some of the infrastructure in those bills were yeah. good. Renewable right? energy initiatives, like obviously like subsidies, tax breaks for battery plants. Like you're you're bringing back a lot of jobs in the country. Right. In a, in a sector that has like so much growth potential on that front like he has done decent things so and and you're right that it's much more than a normal democrat does like, yeah right a normal democrat gives you five percent and pats you on the head these days joe biden uh, because of pressure from younger voters and how important younger voters are to the democratic party and to joe biden and let alone the bernie sanders wing etc cetera, etc cetera, he gave us 15 percent, and so that that's why we're like oh my god he's like so much more progressive than obama but in reality it's still 85 percent bullshit yeah. Your leaders should represent you. I know we've lost that like idea completely in America in the well, last Well, that's why I'm years. so frustrated about like this I iteration of like Joe Biden once again refusing to reckon with popular support for ideas like the ceasefire and just in the most comical way saying no, like Israel has a right to kill more children. Like I don't give a f and I get very frustrated with that because, like, of course there's going to be Arab voters in places like Michigan, but there's going to be people that will not ever forget Joe Biden's actions and, and his statements, right? Muslim voters. And beyond that, I, I get very frustrated at liberals who yell at the likes of myself who say, I think that it's perfectly valid and perfectly reasonable to say you're not going to vote for a, a, a president to extract concessions, like, one year out from an election? That's ridiculous. What the f are we doing here like why are we always voting from a defensive posture forever as the the country and the world as a consequence of this country ratchets towards further and further right-wing policies yeah. that republicans push the needle on and then the democrats solidify and make permanent great example i will give you is this under the bush administration tax cuts for the highest top tax bracket were pushed however this was an initiative that was slated to sunset the top marginal tax rate was slated to sunset so the taxes were about to go back up. Under the o Obama administration, Joe Biden personally sidestepped Harry Reid when Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell were negotiating on this. And it was not a, it was supposed to be a non-starter. Like, yeah, these taxes are going to go up. What the f talking about joe biden sidestepped harry reid to make those top tax cuts republicans push the needle democrats solidify it they calcify it they make it permanent always very so, frustrating so that deal was so bad that evan by a conservative democrat wrote a whole book on that deal saying i can't believe how much joe biden sold us out joe biden made those tax cuts permanent in a way that dick cheney and george bush couldn't have dreamt about this is exactly joe biden's job his entire career is to give the republicans everything they want and then say no it's okay it's bipartisan and then the media comes in and cheers bipartisan bipartisan and he's 200 years old on marijuana brother just make it legal yeah i mean come on over it's a gimme it's a gimme it's, it's so gimme easy to lay it's up. so easy it's not the 1970s it's not the 1990s 90s it's not the 1870s brother over 70 percent of americans want it legal every red state votes to legalize it you dumbass it's so popular no i just I, I hate i hate how stupid the democrats are like they're bad on policy and they're bad on politics so, like at least have one you know what i mean at least republicans do good politics yes, they're bad on right. policy but they do good politics that's they not right. When usually lately this time around they're suffering from their success like dj khaled but they got a little too far ahead with their horrifyingly bad policies so, that but i, I want to go back to michigan for a second because he's lost now biden's lost michigan it's gone his support among arab americans was over 70 percent. it's now down to 15 percent. so michigan is the most critical swing state trump won it in 2016 lost it in 2020 makes all the difference and right now the polling in michigan is a disaster for joe biden it is gone and a lot of arab americans are saying even if i don't vote for trump i'm not voting for biden so they're gonna sit it out we've lost michigan for good if joe biden's a candidate 17 percent of black voters are also moving in the direction of the republican party which is an unimaginable number that has never happened in american history before eight percent last time around up to 17 percent for donald trump the hispanic voting bloc 39 percent looking to vote for the republican party this time around these are incredibly high numbers in the past i've talked about this before the number of black 
people that voted for the Democratic Party could swing in either direction. However, the percentages did not change. It was always like 80%, I mean, not 80, sorry, 90% of the black vote was for the Democratic Party. And then other black voters who didn't vote for the Democratic Party just simply wouldn't vote. I've never experienced a genuine change from, and this is mostly led by black men in general, but voter shift from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party like this. Yeah, so two more devastating stats. On Latino voters, back in 2012, Democrats had a 42-point lead. Now, it's down to a four-point lead for Joe Biden. They've lost Latinos almost entirely. It's nearly even now. That is unconscionable, and there is no way any Democratic candidate can win when they are only winning 4% with Latino voters. And they're over the youth vote like the Israel okay, Palestine that's the stuff thing I was gonna get the to. Israel Palestine stuff so, is like not just there's such a gigantic generational divide here between people who have only known about Israel from television and like pro-Israel coverage versus people who get their information from independent media and also social media. And you see that generational divide. Jonathan Greenblatt is very well aware of it. In a leaked audio, he straight up was saying like, we have a generational problem. 51% of American Jews that are under the age of 35 are pro-Palestine. 51%. That- I love it. It's, it that's it's, America. That's No, but I that's what I'm that. saying. But like, it's, it's ridiculous. Like if you're under the age of 44, and especially if you're under the age of 35 the exact opposite perspective on israel palestine is every other demographic yeah 100 percent. now to to the point about young voters young voters carried biden in 2020 remember he barely won the electoral college by 44,000 votes right and young voters came out 11 percent higher than they did in previous elections including against trump last time in 2016 and young voters also carried the democrats in these last elections in ohio kentucky etc so now biden in the last poll is down to trump with young voters down by four down by four to donald trump among young voters good night irene zero percent chance of winning biden is going to lose.com biden is going to lose.com guys the reason i entered the race why i think it, oh i got this i'm about to win like dude don't say that right no hey listen i'm proud i i'm beating three governors right now so it's a tiny number, but Trump started at 1%, et cetera. But that's not my point. My point is we've got to knock Biden out. That's why I'm in the race. My hair is on fire. He meant like not physically. He now, meant yeah, like- Yeah, in, yeah, rhetorically, politically, obviously, right? We're not I just want to specify. I don't want- yeah. I don't want the Secret Service breaking down yeah. our door on our beautiful Thanksgiving so, dinner. But what? Look at what an egomaniac Joe Biden is. Did you see the when he the turkey pardon where he, when he couldn't finish the sentence? Oh, I did not. Oh, you got to pull that up. Look, nobody can watch that clip and then tell me that Joe Biden should be the Democratic candidate. These guys in Washington, they're all egomaniacs. Wait, it says video misrepresents Biden's departure from White House turkey pardon. That's just mainstream media covering up for him. Just watch the video. A claim: A video clip shows Joe Biden abruptly leaving this year's Thanksgiving turkey pardoning ceremony. False. In a full video. Of Monday ceremony, Biden spent several minutes speaking and talking with photos with guests no, after no, partying. That's not the point. The point is what he said when he was talking. I don't care when he left. I didn't even see when he left. He's making a joke about Taylor Swift. Oh, the, that's where the turkey pardon. Oh, dude, I saw this. He's talking about like Britney Spears. Like, yeah, 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 oh, Britney yeah, yeah. is really yeah. hot out there, Jack. He gets Britney Spears and Taylor Swift confused. Okay, older politician. Who the cares? chairman that's of the National point. Turkey Federation, Steve Lichen, Steve, and your entire family. I met the guy meets the entire family. And by the way, I, I, it's my birthday today. And they can actually sign birthday I, mean, I just want you to know it's difficult great. turning 60. It's difficult. So Come on, man. Why am I running? I don't know. Where am I? I'm going crazy, Jack. <laughs> so he's proposed zero policy so far. None. Zero. Because he's not trying to get anything done. He already got whatever he was going to get done done. He, he wants to be a two-term president because he thinks one-term presidents are considered lame. So he's like, oh, for my legacy and for my ego, we need to be a two-term president, I mean, not a one-term president. Surely egomaniacal uh, geriatric haven't destroyed American democracy in the past four or five years or so before, right? Yeah. I mean, that's never happened. No one's ever died when they're in a profoundly important position of power, for example. Yeah, and what are they going to do with him? They're going to pull a Feinstein if he, if he gets that kind of shape and Kamala Harris is going to wheel him around and say, oh, he says he's for Israel or he says he's for this. I mean, this is absurd, man. 77% of Americans don't think that he's going to be healthy enough to well, finish a second term. Morning not one, not two, but three pop stars. Taylor Swift, Britney Spears, as well as Beyonce. <laughs> Sky News Australia. Give as he discussed him. how far the turkeys Fair have traveled to be pardoned. Had to work hard to show patience and be willing to travel over a thousand miles. You could say even this harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or, or, or 
Rip Britney's tour. She's down in. It's kind of warm in Brazil right now. <laughs> Yo, that's my president. Never mind. I'm back on. He's so sick. Jesus Christ. No, man. no one. No, no demented presidents have ever been awful for America in the past. You know, in the 90s. Look, the guy's the Mad King. He or won't. The 80s. He won't let go of power. I mean, look at if he thinks democracy's on the line, he's gonna go run, going, eh, kinda, Brazil's kind of hot, or the mayor, so's Britney Spears, <laughs> Malala Malarkey. Come on, come on, dude. You can't finish a sentence. You egomaniac. You, you know what's really funny? He says, get out of the race. He's, it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. What he's actually making a reference to is the Taylor Swift concert where someone died. Yeah, exactly. Of a heat stroke and you're not so, supposed to make fun of that that's not a joke but he doesn't know he doesn't know like if it's britney spears or taylor swift he doesn't know if it's brazil or argentina he doesn't know if it's tuesday or wednesday man this guy's gonna say no one else should run i'm the only one who should run that's why i'm in the race jankforamerica.com biden's gonna lose.com this is so obvious so look Haas. my job is to shake people out of their trance right so you think like dean phillips is gonna like shake people out of this right oh don't come for dean dude you, okay. if you come for the, if you come for the Dean, you best not miss. And, and by the way, Dean got in after I did. And so great. I'm glad that Dean's in. My point is all the governors should be in. Governor Whitmer should be in. Governor Pritzker should be in. Governor Shapiro would kick Donald Trump's ass and would start with 10 points higher than Joe Biden. And Huss, one last thing that's absolutely devastating. When you have an incumbent president, what happens if gas prices go up in October? Guaranteed Trump. Wins. Guaranteed Trump. Yeah. And who controls gas prices? And who do the Saudis love? Oh, the Saudis make no... It's the Saudis over. are very open about their love for Donald Trump. They just very openly are like, yeah, we want Trump back. They're going to jack up the gas prices in September and October, and Biden is going to get landslided. Landslided. He's going to be like Walter frickin' Mondale. He's going to lose the country on his watch because this egomaniac wouldn't put down the gavel. I don't know why I said gavel. <laughs> It's kind of fun, but um, so he's out there and he's like, no, I don't think any governor should get so, in. So what I, you, what's your suggestion? And by the though? way, these guys are going around saying that I should be kept off the ballots. They're using the DNC to try to keep me off the ballots. So Joe Biden's for discrimination. Okay. Joe Biden is get a loser ass. who can't fight out in the public, get but does ass. those these things in the dark at night. Like, oh yeah, we'll use the state parties to keep our competitors off the ballots because our guy can't finish a sentence. You can't finish a sentence. Retire. Retire tire you're gonna lose to donald trump you're gonna lose democracy you narcissist who do you think uh should run outside of yourself of course because you've talked about this like there's a uh, people cynically being like so you're just a spoiler candidate then no i don't know why it's so hard for people to understand the difference between running in a democratic primary and running as an independent in an independent race you could be the spoiler that's obvious right but in a primary if you say anyone in a primary is a spoiler you're saying you shouldn't have primaries you're saying whichever the powerful anoint should be the leader hillary clinton has been anointed by the powerful you're being a spoiler by running against her we should all accept corporate rule then you're not a progressive go be an establishment you know suck off you know and go kiss hillary clinton and joe biden's feet but i got no interest in you we run primaries by the way primaries strong primaries produce strong candidates 2016 most vicious primary we've ever seen in our lives for the republicans and they win oh i thought you were gonna say no Strong no, primary no, for Hillary Clinton, strongest no, candidate, not not so no. much. Dude, in 2016, the Republicans are talking about dick size on the national stage, and they won, and they won in 2020. There's 27 candidates on the Democratic side, and they won. So when the mainstream media tells you, oh, primarying uh, powerful people who are incumbents and suck off corporate donors, who do you, is for, for is spoiler candidate, who do you, terrible, don't ever run against them. Who do you Bow think is, your head. Who do you think is being cowardly right now by not running against Joe Brandon when you know they could be popular obviously I, a lot of people say gavin newsom but i don't think gavin newsom would poll well nationally there's that's two different things who would be more popular i think whitmer and shapiro uh would be more popular than newsom right yes well here's the other thing though generic democrat that is lifeless faceless polls 18 points better than joe biden so what you're saying is backed up by the data like you're you're not coming at this for people who are on you and saying like oh, yikes uh seems like you want the democratic party to fail sweaty because so many of you are stupid ass dnc mouthpieces and you don't even get paid for it you absolute 
dinguses assume the position that like you just have to sit there and take it the dnc tells me who to vote for and i vote for it because that's the defensive posturing that's the defensive voting that we must engage in every time okay something that you need to remember is that no this is supposed to be a democratic process which is why extracting concessions from your leaders is perfectly valid perfectly just pressuring them is perfectly valid perfectly just and demanding a better candidate that is actually going to not lose the election to donald trump is also perfectly valid and perfectly just so just remember that when uh, when Jenk is doing this and you're like, oh man, I can't believe he's done this. Like I've joked around about his chances, of course, but ultimately I think he's right when when he says that Joe Biden has to be swapped out with someone else. So the original idea was get more governors into the race, but to your point, you asked about courage and it turns out they don't have it. So look, they have other things. They'd be 18 points higher than Joe Biden, but they don't have courage. If any of them had courage, you know how easily they could have knocked this guy out in a primary? If J.B. Pritzker came in with his billion dollars oh yeah he would have annihilated by and also his he would physique. be the president of the united states but he was too scared and also his physique because he is rotund and americans want to vote for a rotund men okay well then i'm in good shape so no you are nowhere near as big of a boy as jb is though come on you know yeah I, I i hear you look john shapiro beat a trump acolyte by 15 points in pennsylvania he's popular he in pennsylvania he'd carry pennsylvania easily so shapiro would be ten thousand times better than joe biden i want everybody in the race but since they were not profiles in courage new plan is make biden retire okay enough with uh, like being gentle and polite the brother's not understanding polite we need to all get in his face and we need to go hey cut the malarkey okay you're 81 <laughs> years old you gotta retire jack okay and no this isn't political let me whisper it for you joe you're being a narcissist and you're gonna ruin democracy because you want a second term you selfish all right even i have limits but we all gotta push him out no joe no way no way joe no way no way push him out look i even bought woundedantelope.com this guy's a wounded antelope he's he's not everybody knows this but nobody will say it so my job is to scream it from the rooftops until people go oh yeah He's 18 points lower than a generic Democrat. We're mental for running this guy. We're purposely trying to lose to Donald Trump. It's going to be funny when they run these clips against you and myself to be like, Joe Biden lost because of you and not because he was 800 years old and every poll said that 75% of the Democratic Party don't want him to run again. I don't care. They, they Look, the DNC does propaganda 24-7. They'll do propaganda about that. Even, but if, even if you said Joe Biden's great, they do propaganda pretending you said he was bad. It doesn't matter. I'm not interested in their stupid propaganda and now voters under the age of 50 they're on your bullshit wounded antelope.com yeah wounded antelope.com oh my god it is real oh christ I'm wounded antelope.com goes to jank for america.com that's so funny all right well our family's here and i think we're gonna go sit down for dinner soon so you know on a powerful note thank you so much for coming on uncle jank the jank off this time around we didn't really duke it out at all in the marketplace of ideas next next thanksgiving next thanksgiving <laughs> we'll talk about crime again next thanksgiving in the white hey, house trump started at one percent i started at two percent I'm, I'm doubling trump yeah but anything's possible okay. anything's possible brother okay <laughs> okay but mainly let's go make sure we knocked Joe Biden out politically.